Raised beds have become very popular amongst gardeners and there are several good reasons for this. First, raised beds enable you to grow almost anywhere. It doesn't matter what your existing soil is like or even if you have soil underneath them. With a raised bed you can add your own soil and compost which gives you a great weed free start to your garden. Second, raised beds also help you to avoid some common problems, soil compaction and poor drainage. Walking on soil squashes it down, removing the essential air pockets in the soil structure which can make it too hard for plants roots to easily grow through and also prevents the free drainage of water. This can be especially problematic on heavy clay soils, but all soils do much better if beds and paths are clearly separated. Adding raised beds is the easy way to do this, as it provides a clear physical divide between the growing area and the paths between them. It's also a particularly good way to encourage young children to join in with the gardening without stepping on precious plants. Third, raised beds can help you grow more in a smaller space. By filling them with a rich mixture of potting soil and compost, plants can still get the nutrients and moisture they require at closer spacing than traditional row-based planting. With less gaps between plants, there will be less room for weeds too, which reduces the time you have to spend maintaining them. There are a couple of disadvantages to raised beds. They're more expensive to construct and fill with compost than a traditional vegetable garden and because of the increased drainage they often need more watering during hot weather than ground level plants. It's tempting to build the beds as large as possible but there are good reasons for keeping to particular widths. Raised beds should always be kept to a maximum of 4 feet or 1.2 meters wide. That's because you need to be able to reach into the middle of the bed for weeding and harvesting without stepping onto the soil. Around two feet into the center is the maximum distance it's comfortable to do this. If you're building them against a fence or wall, you'll probably want to limit the width to two or three feet as you can only access them from one side. For height, it's usually sufficient to build them six inches high, although sometimes up to 12 inches is used for root crops. Site the beds as close to the house as possible in a sunny spot because most vegetables and flowers like full sun. In our garden planner you can either draw out raised beds using the rectangle tool or you can pick one of the raised beds from the selection of garden objects to give a realistic look to your plans. It's easy to resize each bed to the dimensions you've chosen and you can copy and paste beds as required. Don't forget to leave adequate space for paths. At least two feet wide is required for comfortable kneeling down access to the plants. Once you have the beds planned out, you can quickly add plants and the garden planner will show how many will fit in each bed at the right spacing for optimal growth. Drip irrigation can also be added if required. The next decision is whether to buy a raised bed kit or to build them yourself. Raised bed kits have the advantage of being easy to construct and the wood is often treated to prevent rotting. Sometimes recycled plastic beds are also available and some raised up boxes can be purchased which require less bending or enable wheelchair access. If you decide to build the beds yourself, you can choose between overlapping the wooden planks and fixing decking screws through one board into the end of the other, or alternatively using wooden posts at the corners. Whichever way you do it, it's easier if the holes in the outer board are pre-drilled to a size just smaller than the screw diameter. To ensure that the wood lasts, there are several options. First, you could use pressure treated wood, which has a mixture of chemicals applied to prevent the moist soil and weather rotting it. Although pressure treated lumber is certified as safe for organic growing, some people have reservations about using it and there are various eco alternatives available to treat wood which are derived from natural products. Second, more expensive woods such as cedar or larch contain natural oils which prevent rotting and make them much more durable. They are more expensive to buy but they will last for many more years before they need replacing. Third, choosing thicker boards can make the wood last longer. For example, here I'm using 2 inch thick locally sourced larch which should last for at least 10 years even without treatment. Once the beds are built, it's time to fill them with soil. It's tempting to just buy the cheapest topsoil you can find or to fill it with soil from around your garden. 
However, to gain the maximum benefit from raised beds, the soil needs to be a rich mixture of soil and composts from different sources, so it's worth spending time and money to get this right. With a good nutrient-rich mix, you usually won't need to add fertiliser. An inch of compost spread on the top each year to supplement what's already there will keep the nutrient levels high. For more intensive growing, consider the square foot gardening method, which combines raised beds with a special soil mix and different plants in each square foot. See our square foot gardening video for more details of how the garden planner can help with this. Raised beds are low maintenance and can yield big harvests for the space they occupy. A good idea is to start small and then add extra beds as your time and budget allows. That way, you'll gradually build up to a highly productive garden that should set you up for success over many years.